to ask about the turning torso building being 10 years old at this point there's been a lot of turning twisting forms in other buildings since then and I wonder if you have any reactions to this uh, sort of be becoming more of a structural trend around the world yeah in a uh, way yes John has been working there so he knows uh, what's then happening on this uh, site sure we was the first building and then after turning torso there became more and more building turning um, 90 degrees or less or more. Mm -hmm. uh, but not in the same way. We are divided in different cubes. Uh, mm -hmm. Six floors in every cube, six times nine is 54. But uh, there is different kind of uh, types of buildings, but uh, it's popular to turn the buildings today, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me how uh, Santiago Calatrava got involved with the project and how it came to be? Well, you have been all involved most in the project. Okay. I came in as a uh, in uh, as a chairman for the board of, uh, uh, in about 2008. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, Jan has been uh, since the beginning of, of uh, this project. Sure, Jan, just tell us how it, remind us how the project came to be. Yes, it was. Um, this is an old shipyard area, and uh, the city decided to to uh, build the exhibition area called Living 2001. And uh, then they decided also to build a uh, like, uh, exhibition about the exhibition area, a pavilion. Uh, and they, they contacted Caratrava about that. Mm -hmm. So, so somewhere it began mm -hmm. uh, with the pavilion and then uh, we, he told us about his uh, other creations around the world, uh, the uh, sculptures uh, and uh, yeah, somewhere there were some thoughts about and asked from our CEO at that time is it possible to make a, a building with an apartment uh, basing on your sculpture? And uh, he said something about, uh, let me think a couple of weeks and I, I will get back to you. So hmm. a couple of weeks later, no, no, there was arriving a, a model of, of the turning torso to be. Right, but it still had to be somewhat risky, right, to embark upon a project with that kind of shape. Yeah, and also uh, we have to realize at that time uh, the city of Malmo was in a rather bad shape because before we have leaned up on our famous shipyard, we had heavy industries, we had car manufacturers, all, all that kind of, of, uh, of heavy activities. Mm -hmm. But the shipyard was out in 1997 and uh, the city suffered, but we had very foreseen and uh, visionary politicians. So they decided to change the city of Malmö from an industrial city to a knowledge city. Mm. And uh, apparently we were in the right time to do that when, uh, as we said, uh, my predecessors in our organization, they also had the vision to uh, start something new. And when we got the possibility to uh, build this icon, on the premises where the shipyard has been. That was an utmost signal for, mm. signal for, for the uh, citizens in Malmö to say that, okay, yeah, we can actually change. We can make it happen. Mm. That's so, interesting because a lot of cities are going from heavy industry to a knowledge-based economy. Chicago, yeah. where we are right now, is one. Yeah. Many cities across the US and, and across, the, across Europe, across the yeah. world. What lessons do you think Malmo has for cities making that transition? First of all, get a university. <laughs> that was uh, one of the best things they did because then we got in the younger people. Younger people nowadays want to live more urban. They want to live in the cities. They want to live in the premises of Tony Torso. It was very easy to get get uh, people to our flats or condominiums. So, uh, that was actually also very good, uh, made it easier for us as well. So. Hmm. 
One thing that's really interesting about this project and uh, many projects in Sweden is uh, it incorporates a significant waste to energy project yeah. in the form of biogas. Can you talk about um, how the building generates electricity, power, heat from waste, and what sort of opportunities there are for buildings to incorporate systems like this 10 years later? Yes, we have a waste disposal unit in every kitchen, so uh, you can put all the garbage in uh, the waste disposal unit, the organic, and uh, it will end up in biogas later on. And that's used for heat or electricity or both? For the buses and the trucks in the area. Oh, okay. So for so the heating gas. and the cooling system, we are uh, using aquifer stone in the limestone bedrock. Mm. Uh, Geothermal. Eight, yes, mm. 80 to 100 meters down in the limestone bedrock. Five, uh, on that area, the exhibition area, there is uh, five... Uh, uh, drills with, uh, for the heating system and five for the cooling system. So we buy the central or district heating for, from E.ON in, in Malmö in Sweden, uh, as well as the cooling system. Mm -hmm. uh, it actually, those five drills in uh, the limestone bedrock can uh, secure 85% of the needs of uh, district heating in that area. So Sweden is blessed, I guess, with the natural resources of having geothermal power for geothermal wells for heating and cooling. Um, but it's also a place where a lot of energy projects and, mm. and energy efficiency projects are, are pushed by, by, a pro by people doing business, by the government. What are some lessons you think for tall building developers and designers uh, when it comes to generating electricity and, and reducing energy consumption in tall buildings? I think the drilling would be most sufficient. We have also <coughs> electric uh, windmills out uh, because, like Chicago, it always is windy in uh, Malmö, so we can handle that as, as well. But, uh, sun energy, well, the techniques uh, is developing, but uh, we don't have so much sun in Sweden as, for mm. example, in the more so south of Europe. So. Mm. Are there interesting um, ways in which new projects are incorporating renewable energy that you're looking to for future projects? Well, those association uh, HSB mm -hmm. uh, is it. It is actually 90 years old, and we have also been uh, uh, taking part in the debate in the community for uh, different kinds of energy. And uh, right now we are uh, sort of uh, contacting or, or uh, discussion with the government because there are different ways how you can uh, make energy or sell it because if we produce our own energy we can use that but if we get too much energy energy we have to sell it but you know you can't switch you have to sell it and uh, and when you get it back you have to pay for it so uh, there is a gap uh, which is the best uh, way of getting uh, the economics together mm. What's HSB working on right now? Sorry? What is HSB working on now? What's, what's in the future? What's next? I wouldn't say. I think that is one of the things they are doing, uh, making it easier for different uh, uh, housing communities to, if, if I invest in uh, solar cells, uh, during the summer, I perhaps can't use everything. I can, can get rid of that or sell it to some industries or something like that. But then I, I lose a lot uh, uh, value on, on the way. I can't get it back for the same price. So I think that is one of the debates we have now that uh, want it to be more equal. If I can just choose in the summer, I can give uh, electricity away. In the winter, I can get you know, the same back without paying anything for it. So uh, that is one of the main points that we are discussing sure. right now. Outside of energy, what sort of projects are you working on? We are working with uh, smaller flats <coughs> because it's uh, quite expensive to build houses in uh, Sweden. 
we have a lot of queue of uh, members that want uh, house, houses or livings or flats. So right now we are, beginning, uh, are building smaller units because it's when you have a smaller square feet, uh, the cheaper it gets. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's our project now. So mm -hmm. build it smaller mm -hmm. instead. What's the next turning torso project for you? Well, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, we are building a lot of more uh, smaller uh, units uh, instead. I don't know if we need another uh, turning torso yet, but uh, you know, our organization has uh, been for 90 years. We have more to go, so uh, who knows? Okay, well, thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.